Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life, you can't see me but I'm here. For those of you guys that are not new to the channel, you probably recognize this background because we've been here before. I'm currently in my mom's backyard and I have some cards that are laid out and we're gonna be talking about how or what you need to feel like a king or a queen today. And also what's kind of zapping your energy, what's kind of zapping your life force. So um, before I get started, I do wanna apologize for any noise in the background Around. this area tends to be has a lot of life so there's lizards there's dogs there's birds there's all types of things going on and also the air conditioning unit will cut on and off throughout the reading so I hope that doesn't bother you or take away from the quality of the message that you will receive during this reading okay so I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes or a few seconds you choose however long you need in order to look at the cards and see which one you're gravitating towards the most and on that note I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in So the first group is this card right here, which is about focusing on the light. Literally, that's the name of it. And the first thing that I'm really seeing with this that draws my attention is not only is she focused on the light, but I can't ignore the fact that there's this huge sunflower here. And for me, instantly, knowing um, herbs and working with you know, plant magic a lot. This just taps right into vitality, life force, and masculine energy. But at the same time, I'm also really drawn to the fact that it looks like she's in a womb or in a space, a space of like quietness or protection. And I feel like that's exactly what this card is all about. Um, for you at this point in your life what you're gonna need in order to step back into your king and queen energy or give to yourself is drawing in your own strength just like she's in the womb or just like a baby that is in the womb and getting nourishment receiving nourishment I'm actually seeing that you're focusing on the things that pull in your strength and don't take away from your strength that being said what is it that is taking away from your strength at this point so this is from the zombie tarot okay so we have the three of swords and we have the six of pentacles it's interesting because um I don't want to offend anybody, but what I'm getting from this, the word that just came through, like the sentence that just came through, is feeding the heartache. Now, there are things in our lives that traumatize us and that hurt us or disappoint, disappoint us or take from us. I feel like this is bringing me right back to the womb where there's you know, a time in your life, it doesn't matter how old you are, how mature or how wise or spiritual, you know, advanced you are. There's always going to be a moment in your life where it's about you receiving nourishment and you not nourishing everyone else. And when I'm seeing this Six of Pentacles, it's a person who is of service and you kind of have been, you know, being of service or doing a lot for other people or other things. And I feel like it could be coming out of heartache or get to the point where it's almost detrimental to your own vitality, to your own life. It's interesting to me that you pulled the card that the heart is not, you know, if it was once a beating source, now all of a sudden it's like people are consuming it. And I feel like there's been something that's been consuming you and bothering you and like literally, you know, turning into to too much work. You know when you love something or you love someone and the work that you put into it, it feels good because you love it, so you wanna give to it, you wanna help it, you wanna, you know, put effort into it. Well, this is when it's like, literally now you're a meal, now you're a feast, now it's almost parasitic, and you have to kind of pull back how you have been of service, how you've been putting yourself, making yourself available, and really protecting yourself. And I think that you're, again, when it comes to protecting, what's gonna help you to feel like a king or a queen, once again, is to go into that womb space where you're not so, you know, accessible, where you're not, um, you know, your boundaries are a little bit more healthier because you need to really get nourished so that you can draw from your strength. It doesn't matter if you're feminine energy or masculine energy. We both, we all have all of those, you know, different sides of ourselves. You really have to tap into pulling in and receiving strength so that you can come back in and be strong once again because it's these heartaches. The heartache right now, you, your heart is like sliced up. It's being consumed and you might actually have been taught or you have this mindset maybe where it's like you've you're almost feeding the heartache you've been it's almost like a martyr like how much can she take how much can he take that shows how much they care and it's like we have to stop putting ourselves in a position where we're just bait and 
call in okay healthy boundaries and call in like um, no you know I'm not gonna say yes to this you're not gonna guilt me into this I don't I'm not gonna allow myself to feel guilty for this it's about this transformation transforming um, the heartache and the experiences and avoiding I don't want to say avoiding it but making sure that you're not a victim to it that any heartache that you've experienced that it serves a purpose a lesson to help make you stronger not you to become a victim of it and I feel like that's kind of something that's happened here is we need to step into a space where you are um, in a womb for a minute where you're not so much doing 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 and you kind of fall back and allow yourself to get nourished while you're doing that you're pulling on things that remind you of your masculine strength that remind you of your power that remind you of your sovereignty that's the word that just came through oh my goodness I really like this and it's a lot of grounding too some of you guys are going to be spending a lot of time, you know, getting your feet barefoot, um, wrapping yourself up in like sunlight, fresh air, um, the elements, things that make you, I'm also seeing dancing for some reason, like really like dancing, thumping or um, drumming, things like that. Those are things that are going to really tap into that masculine energy. It's very primal. That's what's going to help you to step into your power as a king and a queen once again is that um, very primal, very raw, um, natural, like human being, like this is my, this is the core. Like it, it just reminds me of no, no fluff. It's just raw. Like it's nature. It's whole. It's, um, thumping of music, thumping of your feet, you know, really like rhythmic. That's what it is that I'm getting from this. I don't know why, but that's what's coming through. And something about that is really going to help you to step step into. And there's a rhythm that comes with, you know, working with the drums and working with the earth or pounding or, or sometimes thumping your chest. That's something that I'm getting to. Uh, don't do this if it causes pain or anything, but just enough to like thump, thump the power back in and remind you of your personal power. The, group number one is about stepping back into their into their core masculine strength, whether they're feminine or whether they're masculine. Some of you guys are gonna learn how to call the shots, but in order to do it, you have to really thump it. You have to like really like activate that energy. That's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys. Sometimes it happens to all of us where even the strongest warriors, heartache over time or disappointment or being strong for everyone else can wear you down. And sometimes, you know, you being of service, it ends up making you a martyr. It ends up making you, you know, feeding that heartache, feeding that exhaustion, feeding the disappointment. But right now, we're going to get back into that personal space, that personal power, okay? Um, so, and that's what's been taking your energy, my loves. So let's look at these cards. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm seeing the High Priestess. Um, this is about learning how to work with both the dark and the light. Yes, this is about secrets. Yes, this is about intuition. But I've been seeing this a lot as humility, having humility, meaning like the life experience that we are here as spiritual people is there to teach us about how to, how to stay open. The other thing that I'm looking at is this snake. That's something that I never really noticed about this card, but I started noticing it a lot. It's the snake that comes through, and the snake is the card of desire, knowledge, transformation, and empowerment. The snake also reminds me of kundalini energy that gets, you know, starts to rise up when it's activated. And it comes from the root chakra. So all of that is stemming up. And then also, I'm looking at the two of wands and this baby here, right? So this baby actually brings me right back to the energy of the womb the energy of the womb. And pretty much what I'm seeing is this baby here, it doesn't matter how old you are, how advanced you are, this is actually your spirit right now, the essence of your spirit that's in between these two realms. The shadow, learning how to balance the dark, and the light, the good and the bad, quote in um, air quotes, right? All of this is a part of your transformation. This is what's going to help you to step into your kingdom and your queendom is learning how to work with both of those elements. And all of that comes from humility. That's a big thing. It's like learning how to be humbled by the heartache, by the disappointment, by the service. You being of service to others, there needs to come a healthy balance. That's really what I'm seeing with the Two of Wands. Now, the Two of Wands card is usually about, do I go here, do I go here? But it, in this reading, I'm seeing this about the, the transformation that's coming through, that this evolution that is that you're going through. And learning how to work with, okay, the highs and the lows, because both of them are very equal. And realizing how much it humbles you. 
that's where your power is going to come from. That is where your kingdom and your queendom is going to come from, is being humbled by the experience and then thumping your power back again. So doing things that are really going to help to transform you, but not so elaborate. It's very simple, it's very primal. So again, it's that thumping, or it could be you know, simple magic or working with the earth, maybe earth magic or grounding yourself or running. Some of you guys, it's that running where you just sweat it out. It's very like active. Sometimes when we think of meditation and we think of spirituality, we think of being calm and still. Not for my group number one. You guys are getting dirty. You guys are getting, you know, your feet wet. You guys are sweating. You guys are, you know, dancing. You're not, there's no, uh, the word is enhanced. It's like, I don't know why enhanced, but you're enhancing your experience by being like totally free and in your element and in your zone. That's what's going to help you feel like a king and a queen again, and that's what's going to pull your masculine power or your, your, um, your strength back to you once again. And after that, honestly, the heartache, you're going to be like, what heartache? What disappointment? What frustration? All of that has helped me to evolve because I learned how to see, I was humbled by it, and I learned how to work with both the shadow and the light because it showed me both of them. That's where my power is getting pulled pulled lately. That's what it is that we're, it's so interesting too because it's like focus on the light. So to me, it's so interesting because some of you guys have actually been focusing on the darkness, not even realizing it. That's not a bad thing. I feel like you guys have been focusing on the dark, the shadow sides for your own evolution, for your own strength, but now it's time to balance both of those worlds, okay? Wow, group number one. I feel you on that. Okay, group number two. Every journey starts with a single step. Literally, that's so simple. It's so simple. The first thing that I'm seeing right here is the vortex and all of this energy. I feel like it's coming from her rawness. I feel like it's coming from her purity. This is who I am. This is the essence of my being. I feel like this is someone who's gone through a long journey, whether, whether it comes, comes from self-love or self-appreciation or ob observing themselves and being like, this is who I am. I have nothing to hide. This is the core of the essence of my being. And that's knowing that, seeing that, you're like, now I'm gonna take the first step to start the rest of my life. So that's something that's really going to um, ignite my number two, um, your, your, your royalty, your strength, your queendom, your kingdom, is um, really that transformation that happened. And that could have come from a trip, because she is carrying a suitcase. That could have come from a trip. That could have come from, I feel like it's ninth house matters. So it could be your study of spirituality, your focus on you know, connecting with different people, different cultures. Maybe you're going on a different trip, or maybe it's higher education. That's what I'm getting from this. And it all started with that single step. Either you're going to take that step, or you're called to do it. Or you did, you were called to do it. Now, what is it that's pulling away from your strength right now? From the zombie tarot, we have the Knight of Cups and the Hermit. So this is so interesting to me because again, this reminds me, this brings me back to the nine of the, the ninth house because the Hermit is about internal seeking. Yeah, I feel like what's been drawing drawing you in is or taking your power is actually, it's time for, you've been in a space, this isn't a bad thing, but there's balance with everything. There, you've been in a space where you've really been in your head and your thoughts and trying to connect with how you, like what's next for yourself. It's so funny because the same thing that's called, like drawing your drawing your energy out, like number two, it's like, your, your path feels really destined. It feels like it, there's a sequence of events of how things happen, so it's not like an obstacle or a challenge. It's just kind of like, this is where you're at, and now this is the next step. So it's not that this has been a negative thing, because I actually don't get negative vibes from this. These cards aren't you know reversed, and I'm not getting bad energies from it. I just feel like it's the next thing where you've been really like internally seeking Okay, or maybe you've been studying, maybe you've been spending some time away from the world, disconnected from the world so that you can spend time um, researching or internally seeking and you know, asking yourself personal questions, connecting with your heart. Maybe you were in love or in a relationship that disconnected you from the rest of the world and it's just kind of like that phase where you were in the closet or you know, hidden away from the rest of the world because this is the hermit card. See how she's so focused on what she has? And there's things that are trying to get to her, but she's doing this out of the out of like self-love or 
and that's just where she's at in her journey that's what she's focusing on so that could be a relationship that could be your career it could be your studies your spirituality your meditation self-love exercising whatever maybe you were just in a, a space in your life where your your energy was a lot lower than it normally is and you're just kind of like connecting it could be sometimes you know going on dates or because that's the thing with the knight of cups it's all about come party with me come hang out um you know an offering a pulling something that entices you and this guy is definitely the king of enticing and romancing so it's something that's been drawing you in and it's not necessarily a negative thing it just is what it is it's a cycle in your life but it's just time for you to really take that step out um take that step out i realize i just forgot to pull the last card for the group number one oh yeah see transformation oh i feel bad for group number ones okay Anyways, so yeah, I just feel like it's time to take that next step. Literally, every journey starts with a single step. It's just one step. And I feel like that all these butterflies around her are just showing the transformation that happened when you were in this quiet space. But I feel like what's going to help you to connect with your inner queendom and inner kingdom, um, that what's gonna make you feel like a queen or a king is actually taking that step and, and embarking on the journey now i feel like you've already asked yourself the questions you know the answers to the questions now you're going to take that first step and put yourself out there let's see what these cards are showing yes this is the seven of swords we have the magician and we also have the six of pentacles this is about you realizing especially these two together you realizing and you knowing and you calling the shots now it's like okay i don't need to you know be here I don't need to escape I don't need to serve this I don't need to be like with these with this group with this person doing these things it's about really knowing your power knowing what you want honoring it and stepping into that and calling it it's calling the shots it's it almost seems like people will be surprised that you are just so in your element and number two again I'm getting this vibe that it's not so much of like trans like number one was about transformation and kind of like this like like huge cycle that it is that they're going through in their lives number one or number two you're about just this is the next step it's because of this hermetic stage and phase that you were in that helped you to actually see and claim your power and call in your power and now you're kind of calling the shots you have everything that it is that you need mentally emotionally physically spiritually all of those things are aligned your will has aligned and you're realizing like okay you're almost like you know skirting negative energy you're almost skirting things that don't feel right you're just totally like moving away from them sidestepping them and you're now in a position where you're deciding okay i'm gonna give some of this of myself here i'm gonna give some of myself here and that gets none of none of me so that's where it is that you're at right now and that's what's going to help you even further in the next stage at, at, from now moving forward to help you feel like a king or a queen is realize like delegating realize that you don't need to be accessible to everyone everything not everybody needs to gain access to your energy and you really are calling the shots you are in such a position of power right now it's it's remarkable especially with the magician card here the seven of swords and the six of pentacles this is about i'm going to give a little to you give a little bit to you why because i know my value i know my worth and i'm going to only give where i want to give and that's what it is that you're learning how to do is realizing not everybody deserves access to you and every people need you more than you need them remembering that knowing that Okay, and all of that came to you because you were in this space of, you know, being a hermit for a minute, just kind of disconnecting from the rest of the world. All of those hands trying to gain access to you, you're just like, no. This could be people that are just like, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Or, um, hey, can you take this on? And you're just like, are you going to pay me? And some things, money can't, you can't pay for it. Sometimes, like, people want to have access to your time and your energy, and you're just like, no, my focus is actually on this right now because that's my priority. And you might have to wait to have access to me or you might not have access to me. Maybe because you don't deserve it or maybe because I'm not there. You know what I mean? That's that's really where your queendom and your, your queen and king energy is going to come from. I want to look back at this card again. Yeah, it's about you. I see it's like people want what you're holding on to. And you're just like knowing that 
I'm going to take the first step and do with this what I will because what I'm holding on to is so valuable, is so worth it. And all of this energy, is she's just calling it in, this vortex of energy, it's like power, just this surge of energy is just all coming from her heart, coming from her chest, coming from her sacral, from her root chakra, from her crown chakra. All of these things are aligned. Number two is super aligned right now. And if you don't feel it, that's what it is that you're walking into, burden. Isn't that so funny? She's carrying this suitcase. She's carrying this suitcase. I actually feel as though, like I know that here, this sounds kind of crazy, but when I see burden, I feel like this is something that, again, it's like the burden that you're carrying, the, the whatever you're having in this suitcase is something that you, it gives value to you. So to take on any more, or to be of service or to do too much is going to then become a burden. That's what right now you're called to do is in this space, you know, there are things that are really trying to gain access to you, are trying to pull your attention away from you manifesting your desire, from you taking that first step. There are a lot of things that are gonna try and entice you, but you actually have to kind of disconnect from that and skirt it, you know what I mean? Like kind of like navigate around it and away from it so that you can really call in the shots because it's a quick, as a king and as a queen, you have to know that, okay, if I spend time in the kitchen, that takes me away, that takes me away from ruling the, my queen, my kingdom. There's people who are, you know, whose job is to do that. That's not my job. So I'm gonna focus on ruling the kingdom or ruling the queendom. If I'm spending time, you know, in the garden, which I like to do, you know, like constantly gardening, when I have responsibilities and things that I need to do for me, I'm not gonna be able to rule my kingdom. I'm not gonna be able to travel. I'm not gonna be able to do these things, these things that I'm called to do, these things that I wanna do. So let people do what they have to do and you don't take on the burden of that because you have enough that you're manifesting. You have enough that you need to focus on that is your priority. The burden that you're carrying right now that you know that you need, that that is for you and doesn't feel like a burden because it's worth it, that's what you need to focus on. And to take on anything else, like literally leave that for other people. That's other people's responsibility. That's their work. That's their journey. This could even be emotional. Don't take on other people's baggage. That's for you to, you have to take care of what you're doing so that you can be full, right? So when you help yourself, you are then in a position to help others. But for right now, you need to make sure that there's healthy boundaries and you're not taking on other people's baggage. Okay, and again, it's so interesting that she's carrying that suitcase or baggage or the burden. You've got enough. And all of what you have right now is everything that you need in order to manifest. In order to know what you want, know what you should be doing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The number seven is coming through for you guys too, by the way. All right, that's what I'm seeing. Let's move on to number three. All right, number three, let's talk to you. We have the word wants to be written. This card is about having a message, having creativity, having inspiration, and needing to get it out. These are things that the divine is giving to you and channeling to you. It's like, it, it's so funny to me because these butterflies here at the top of her head, it reminds me of what it feels like when I get a divine message or when my aunts, my guides speak to me or when spirit speaks to me. It's through my crown chakra. It feels like there's little spiders going through my scalp, that's what this reminds me of. It's like little butterflies on your scalp and that tingling sensation is like, it's there to transform your life because you are getting downloads, you're receiving messages, you're receiving a calling. So I'm going to actually avoid these cards right now because these are the cards that are showing me what's zapping your energy um, and taking away from your power as a queen or a king and I'm gonna focus because I wanna know what this is coming, what's coming through for you. Yeah, I feel like you're receiving messages, my loves. You're receiving, um, you're get, receiving downloads. Even as I'm looking at the Ten of Wands, it feels like a burden. It feels like a heavy responsibility. It feels like, is this real? Can I carry this? Can I do this? Yes, you can. It's going to bring you incredible success. The Ten of Wands is the card of too much burden, but I'm honestly feeling like it's the, it's like a, a message that's so divinely like aligned, that's so, such a good idea, such a powerful message, such a powerful prophecy, such a powerful destiny, that it feels overwhelming when you hear it, when you sense it, that you don't feel like you can carry it. The reality is, is that it's going to give you stability, strength, vibrancy, like 
the life that it is that you've been wanting. It's like a person who's about to take on a commitment or a project and they're like, this is the most major thing ever, but can I do it? Yes, you can, it's coming in. These, these um, hyenas here with the three of wands, it reminds me of those plaguing thoughts or people like negative thinking or negative energies outside that are like, ha ha ha, laughing at you. And it's just like, you know what? I'm passing through the gates though. Like literally, you have three of wands and you have four of wands. And then five, 10 of wands. It's like a lot of powerful energy that's coming through to you. It's almost like you have these laughing things. Maybe it's plaguing voices, plaguing shadows, other people saying that you can't, you can. You have to like cry it out. That's something like before I started Bahati Life, I remember I got a prophecy. Well, I didn't just start it, but I saw a vision of what it was to become and what my life was gonna look like. And it was so amazing, but I cried. <clears throat> I cried because I was excited, but more than that, I was scared and I didn't know if I could do it and if I would do it, if I would be able to do it alone. <clears throat> and I knew that in a lot of ways I would and I had to cry it out, but it was such a divine prophecy. It was such a divine spoken word over my life. And I did it, and I'm still doing it. And it, that's how where I'm at. Four of Wands is celebrating it and feeling the joy and the pleasure and the security of it. All of those things are things that came to me and then I also called in, but were also a part of my destiny. It came through as a prophecy, a vision, a feeling. And I honored it and I listened to it. So you can do it. So ignore these laughing hyenas. Definitely ignore the laughing hyenas. I don't even see the goat as bait, I see it as sacrifice. I see it as the work and the passion and you know, you the sacrifice is you not listening to them. You're, you're trading in your comfort for a greater future, for a greater destiny, for a greater purpose. It feels like a burden, but you're very protected right now. You can do it. That's what you're, it's gonna give you your queen. Yeah, oh my God, stop the spider creative projects you guys are weaving an incredible future for yourself it's a, a project a book a something a written something you are creating you are literally manifesting you know this this divine like thing again it could you guys could be writing a book you could be publishing you could be creating writing an oracle deck um, stepping into your destiny it's a prophecy whatever the vision that it is that you had for yourself that you've heard that you've been feeling this is telling you that it is being created it is being co-created, you're co-creating it, and it feels like it can't be done, it can. That's what's gonna call you, um, connect you to your queendom and your kingdom, is the abundance and the, the abundance in all forms. Actual material, but spiritual, emotional, mental abundance, like that peace of mind that's gonna come when you are stepping into your personal power and co-creating this project this thing that it is that you're manifesting. I'm really seeing this as your your purpose, your destiny, and really rolling your sleeves up and realizing that the greater the vision, the greater the reward for it. And I really feel like the divine doesn't give us things that we can't handle. And if there's one person that's going to do it, it's gonna be you. This is your project, this is your destiny, this is your prophecy. So get started, get created on it, start creating it. I just wanna tell you that it's, What's gonna help you feel like a king or a queen is realizing that it's going to seem impossible. It's going to seem like it can't be done. As I'm saying that, an ant just bit my booty. <laughs> but that, to me, is a symbol to get going, to get started. It's that little ant that says, come on, let's go. And it bites your butt and it says, all right, yeehaw, let's get this party started. And it's gonna create the security for yourself, but believe in yourself, even if you have to do it by yourself, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Now what's zapping your energy right now? Queen of Swords, doubt. Oh my God. The same thing, okay, it's the doubt. You have this passion, right? You have this project, this thing that is igniting you that you feel passionate about, and you're doubting it. Ten of, ten of, um, ten of um, Pentacles, in this case it's the Hazards, but Ten of Pentacles and Queen of Swords, it's like, I am doubting it. It's like a person who fears success because of what can come from it. Do I have what it takes? Of course the Queen of Swords would ask that because it's a realistic question, but the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you do. It's the realistic, logical side of yourself that wants proof again and again, but it's your feelings. You have to connect with your feelings. And also, this is a prophecy. It's a divinely guided message that's telling you that it is time, that this is for you. It's not gonna be logically explained. It's something that you feel. It's given to you by God, so it's not gonna make sense to everyone else. In fact, everyone else is probably gonna laugh at you, so stop sharing your idea or your project with other people. Protect your idea and protect yourself while you manifest this idea. That's what's gonna help you to step into your power as a king or a queen is realizing that this idea is appointed to you by God. Say no more, fam. All right, let's move on to group number four. 
Okay, be the hunter, not the hunted. You know what I see from this? Everything is so connected, everything has an energy, everything has a vibration. And I feel like you're gonna zero in on the things that you are picking up on. It's like a sense, like a sensory, a sixth sense that you're picking up on. This is mine. I'm not a victim to this anymore. It's like you're changing your vibration so that others can't zoom in and attack you. You've actually protected yourself and you can zoom in and like the roles have switched up. You're no longer the mouse, you are the owl. So you, your vibration changes so you're not running away from things, you're actually running to things. You're the one who's shooting in like an arrow. You're not the victim anymore. That's what's gonna help you to step into your personal power is realizing that you're no longer the victim. And if you have not realized that, you need to get into the mindset that says, I'm not the victim, I'm actually the one who's pursuing. I'm the one who's stepping into my personal power. I am no longer going to succumb to the things that I once was vulnerable to. I've been there, done that, grown from it. It almost reminds me of group number one where it was about being humbled by the experience. But in this case, I feel like there's a lot more trauma for group number four. And I wanna acknowledge that. So let's, I do wanna start off with what's been zapping your energy. Yeah, two of, two of pentacles and four of pentacles. I feel like this is like this mindset or this energy of being um, kind of stuck and like hidden, where you're like hidden. You feel like you can't do more than you have. You've become a victim. You really have become a victim. Do you see how this person is tied to this guy and he's like laughing at his expense that's you're like you've been in this like victim mentality and you haven't really allowed yourself to release you know disconnect from that you've been the hunted you've been hunted you've been played with you've been toyed with what's going to help you connect with your personal power is switching the roles and now <laughs> that's going to be them and this is going to be you or you're just totally disconnecting and guarding yourself and protecting yourself no longer being um, having peop allowing people to have access with toying with your emotions, toying with your desires, toying with your paycheck, toying with your health, your vitality. If you're going to the doctor, this is where you're like, listen, these med medicines or these things are not making me feel good, or this lifestyle is not making me feel good. I need to speak up. I know that you're a professional, but I know my body, and my body says no. That's such a specific example, but it really goes to show that it doesn't matter what the powers of control look like. You know what I mean? Like a doctor should know all, but the reality is, is that you know how your body feels, and if it doesn't feel right, it's time for you to speak up. That's an example, but it's a metaphor for anything in your life that you know how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel like you're a slave to it, if it makes you, if it takes away from your personal power, you have to kind of wisen up and stop being a victim to it and speak up for how you're feeling and speak up for how other people are making you feel or just disconnecting and taking, your, taking yourself elsewhere. Because four of pentacles is I'm not moving, I'm staying here. Why would you stay in a position that makes you feel like a slave, that makes you feel like a dog? You wouldn't. It's not if you're a king or a queen. That spirit wants you to realize that you should not be on your hands and your knees. You shouldn't even be this guy right here because even this guy seems powerless to me. Like you're not, you're not even in this energy anymore. Like you should be totally disconnected from all of this energy. You need to remove yourself. But like you're like, la la la, I can't hear it. Yeah, my love, Liz, look, you need to transform, you need to change, you need to disconnect. Queen of Swords says, girl, get off of your hands and your knees right now. Or boy, get off your hands and your knees right now. What are you doing? Do you see this whole world out there for you? Step into your personal power. You call the shots. You have a life force energy. You have a vision. You have passion. You have strength. You have good thoughts. You are intelligent. You have strength that other people do not have. Step into that. That's what needs to be transformed here, is working to burn all of that. Burn it, make it die, kill it off. You're not a victim here. You need to be this person. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. This needs to be you. And these things are, again, this two of pentacles here. These are the, these things are, are, are what, what it is that you're hunting. I don't even say that you hunted it because it's like you just realized, nope, I'm done. I'm disconnecting from this. I don't like this. I'm not even gonna be, in this energy anymore. I actually see you totally leaving this energy. I don't even think that you wanna be in this role. You just wanna be done with it. Especially with the death card. This is about stepping into your personal power. The queen, of, the queen of Swords knows what she wants and so does the King of Wands. And they do it because they love it and she does it because it's hard but she, she knows what's right. 
and she's not gonna let her emotions make her victim and neither is the king of wands. These two are king and queen. So it's like you have to burn that, that stuff, feed it to the fire and be released from it. That's what's gonna help you to step into your personal power is getting off of your hands and your knees. Yep, look, death. You have two cards of death here. Total transformation. I don't, so what's gonna help you step into your queendom and your kingdom is really feeding the fire, relinquishing it, removing yourself from that energy. This, these two cards are there to show you what is zapping your energy and what's zapping your sovereignty. It's you staying in the status quo. It's you staying right here. Four of pentacles and two of pentacles. That's, I'm just gonna stay right here in, in what it is that I've got, got going. But that makes you the hunted. That makes you the victim. That makes you vulnerable, not in the good way. So you have two cards here that are saying what's going to help you to step into your power is going to be death. It's gonna be transformation. It's gonna be release. It's gonna be speaking up just like Franklin did. Okay, that's what's gonna help you. It's gonna be hard for some of you guys, but when you do it, your life is gonna come back. You're gonna feel life vitality force coming back to you in full force. Because that's what it is that she's holding on to. She's feeling the flame, she's feeling the passion. The same thing that she's feeding into the fire is the same thing that's fueling her fire and your fire. And that's gonna be the truth for you. Oh my God, I love this card so much for many reasons. There's a connection to Egypt here. There's a connection to the high priestess and obviously there's bees and me being the high priestess of Bahati life with ancestry that goes back into Egypt and royalty. This is my card and it says big, bold vision. The first thing I want to, for you to see is the fact that she can see. She sees in her eyes the, the destiny. Her vision is so huge. Her destiny is so huge. This is something that is so sacred. It is something that she feels. It's rooted in her, it's in her blood, it's in her ancestry, it's in her lineage. That's where her strength is pulled from. That's what she can see. She can't see the lower vibration. She doesn't mingle with the lower vibration. She mingles with her, her destiny. She mingles with her purpose. She mingles with her alignment, with her vision. That's the only thing that she can see. That's the only thing that she can see. Everything else isn't even a distraction. It isn't even noise because she can't hear it. That's how focused she is. And that's gonna be you. I am already getting a huge sense of personal power from group number four. So these two cards show where what energy is zapping you. I don't know what this is yet. I haven't seen these cards yet, but this is what's going to help you. Okay, so again, this is about the vision. This is about getting started on it. This is about building it. This is about feeling it. Again, I'm feeling no distractions. These two cards, I mean, I, I just have to talk about this. This is about no distractions. This is about the the, Knight of Wands and the Page of Pentacles, they are so focused. Knight of Wands is passionately focused and he's just like coming to life. It's just like a force that is would burn and singe anyone who tries to touch it. Anyone who tries to distract it, anyone who tries to deplete that energy is going to get burned. That's how protected she is. That's how protected you are. Anybody that tries to touch you is instantly singed. No one can touch this. You're not going to allow it. There's just no way you're going to allow it. You're coming to life. You've been coming to life. You're stirring to life, but you have a new project, a new passion, a new thing that you are investing yourself in, that you are focused in on. The other thing too is that you're invested in it. This is the Page of Pentacles. He is a baby, but he is so committed. He's so invested. He's the most involved and the most serious of all the pages and he's just investing his time, his energy, his resources into building that project that is going, that has ignited his fa his fame, or, oh my God, I don't know why I say fame, but um, his fortune, his blessing, his gifts, all of those things, his create, creative projects, this thing that you are focusing on, this thing that has your full undivided attention, and the aid of wands is about blasting through, so it has to be focused. It's like a gust of wind that just helps to carry you. It's like momentum. So I'm really seeing you guys connecting with that energy and riding the wave, riding the wind to get to that ultimate destination that you really have had your focus on. Number four knows their power. They know their strength. I don't even feel like you need to be reminded because you just know it. You just kind of sense it. So what's blocking you then? Okay. Knight of Wands, so the same thing that is, maybe you're, I think you're your own worst enemy. I feel like this is a person who has a lot of power sometimes, but when they're not, when no one's looking, they accidentally are running and they trip over their own two feet. 
because they're just like running. They're picking up so much momentum, especially with the Eight of Wands, it's very fast. And the Knight of Wands shows up for you twice. So it's like your same energy, that same energy will trip you up. And with the Five of Swords, sometimes this is um, conflict and drama with other people. Um, so that's possible, but because I'm seeing this group is so focused, so determined, maybe that's what it is. It's like you don't need to be distracted by projects, like lighter projects that other people are doing or things that other people are doing. You need to just really focus on what is igniting you. You don't really need to be engaging and mingling in other other distractions, other drama, other activities. You just need to focus on what, what you've got going on. And if that's the case, you need to give it your all undivided attention. You don't need to be your own worst enemy. You don't need to be giving yourself negative thoughts or you know speaking ill over your projects, speaking ill over your life. You need to really be you know watching your words and watching your energy and um, keeping your energy high because this vision that you have is so huge. Literally, it says big, bold vision. That means that Divine has given you a, a project that is bigger than most people can handle, but you can handle it and you're going to do it. And I see you really taking off. So, but it's just like making sure that you're, if you really are taking off, that you stay focused and you're moving in the right direction. You're moving in, you know, what you feel you're called to do. It's something that you sense, it's something that you feel, and not getting distracted by the bullshit. Oh my God, look, the eagle. This is like an eagle when he's soaring and he finds his prey and he's zooming in to snap it up. Spirit, integrity, connection to the angelic realm. Your destiny and your purpose is so great. Like the magnitude of it is so great. Um, that integrity, integrity to me really stands out because it's like you're not messing around with pigeons. You know what I mean? No offense to pigeons or anything like this, but you're an eagle right now. So you have to really focus in on what you're doing, not the chatter of birds like parakeets or any other outside noise. Integrity means like I'm matching my will, my intent with where it is that I'm going and I'm not engaging in other things that just, just derail me from my purpose, my destiny. And your spirit is invested in this. Your energy is invested in this. You have this vision. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I feel like group number four is going to get their most power from. One, two, three, four, five. So maybe group five. This last group is going to get their passion from is by honoring their projects and really giving it their all and going in like an eagle. It's so funny because before I got on the plane to head to where I'm at right now, I saw a red hawk and I just saw like what it's like when you focus in on something and you zoom in. Think of an, how an eagle sees and like locks eyes with what they want and they wait for it and then when the time is right, they soar in and they snatch it up and they yank it up. That's what it is that you guys are doing. You've, you've contacted it in you access the vision that's all you can see that's all you can hear it's you're zooming in like you're powering in so nothing can really distract you nothing should distract you that's where you're gonna get your your um, your royal energy from your queendom from your kingdom from is by zooming in and zeroing in and going in like a bat out of hell Especially, again, once um, with Eight of Wands and Knight of Wands and Page of Pentacles, this is for you to come in like a spear. Like, just, you know what you want. <laughs> All right, you guys, so that's what I'm seeing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. <clears throat> Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Blessings to all of my king and my queens out there, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.